who co-wrote a book about wellness, who became a wildly successful investor, and who's coming back for the 90s show reboot. Watch this to find out what the surviving cast members of That 70s Show are doing today. As the first star to climb out of the That 70s Show basement and into the higher stratosphere of a movie career in 2005, Topher Grace's transformation was a gradual one. The actor struggled to shake off his association with neurotic nerd Eric Foreman, a character type that appeared to rub some real-life nerds the wrong way when he was cast as Venom in Spider-Man 3. Oh, <laughs> yes. Speaking with IndieWire, the actor recalled that after that 70s show, he didn't want to do anything but work with auteurs. Impressively, Hollywood understood the assignment, and the actor was cast for a number of dark, complex, and acclaimed performances in projects like Black Klansman and Black Mirror. On top of his acting, Grace has also become renowned for his succinct homemade edits of several Star Wars movies. He said of the hobby to GQ, It's like a dad band thing, except even nerdier. Eric Foreman would be proud. It was also, admittedly, a hobby that he confessed to having time to do before he had kids. The star married True Blood actor Ashley Hinshaw in 2016, and the couple have two children together. In a case of art imitating life, Grace went on to depict a man juggling parenthood with his creative career in the 2021 sitcom Home Economics. When Laura Prepon's Donna Pinciotti ditched her iconic natural red hair to go blonde in the final season of That 70s Show, the simple change acted as a symbolic signifier for the show's end. True to form, Prepon continued the trend of symbolic hair colors by dyeing her hair black in the mid-2010s. She also balanced comedic roles with darker performances in projects like Orange is the New Black and The Girl on the Train. Outside of acting, Prepon is thriving as well. In 2016, the actor collaborated with nutritionist Elizabeth Troy on a wellness dietary book titled The Stash Plan. The plan was inspired by some health and digestive issues she experienced in her 20s, with the star subsequently confirming to people that she remains in the best shape of her life due to her new lifestyle. There are likely other positive influences helping her along, too. In 2021, for instance, Prepon revealed that Scientology is no longer part of her life and hadn't been for five years. Instead, she finds peace in daily meditation with her husband, actor Ben Foster, whom she married in 2018. The couple have two children together. As one of the more high-profile stars of the show, Mila Kunis has enjoyed a pleasantly varied career as well as starring in body comedies like Ted and the guilty pleasure good times of the Bad Moms films. She's also received critical acclaim for her performances in flicks like Black Swan and The Book of Eli. Speaking to Playboy in 2013, Kunis expressed that, realistically speaking, Hollywood isn't too kind to women in their 30s, stating, I think you have to choose. Do you want to have a life or do you want to have a career? Arguably, she still has both. In 2015, Jackie Burkhart finally got her Michael Kelso when Kunis married her former co-star, Ashton Kutcher. The couple tried and failed to keep it a secret, as glimpsed on The Late Late Show with James Corden. Did you get married? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Let me look at your hand. Boy! Oh, you got married! They got married, everybody! The two are proud parents of a daughter born in 2014 and a son born in 2016. And if you're wondering why Kunis's eyes look different than they did on that 70s show, should you regularly find yourself lost in them, there's actually a medical reason for it. In 2011, the star revealed to Cosmopolitan that she'd secretly struggled with partial blindness due to an inflammation of the iris, known as chronic iritis, a condition remedied via surgery in 2010. Considering he was primarily known for playing sweet but dumb Kelso on That 70s Show, Ashton Kutcher may have made the greatest transformation post-show. Although he's maintained a steady acting career, quite notably in sitcoms like Two and a Half Men and The Ranch, he's arguably found greater success away from the industry. A good thing, considering his method acting decision to follow Steve Jobs' notorious fruitarian diet for his performance in Jobs eventually hospitalized him maybe other jobs were more suitable. Subsequently, Kutcher is now better known for having one of the most impressive venture capitalist portfolios in the industry. According to Forbes, his investment portfolio includes Skype, Airbnb, 
Spotify, and Uber, with the star having reportedly amassed a $200 million fortune from doing so. Speaking to Grow, Kutcher revealed he was inspired to invest in startup companies due to him thinking about new and simpler ways to do things, but having no time to develop solutions himself. In 2012, he made notable positive change when he invested in Thorn with his then-wife Demi Moore, a non-profit organization focused on building technology to defend children from sexual abuse and trafficking. The co-founder and chairman remains passionate about the organization and even delivered an emotional testimony to Congress in 2017 about defending children from sexual exploitation. Danny Masterson managed to find reasonable success as executive producer and co-star on the Netflix sitcom The Ranch between 2016 and 2018. However, his post-That 70s Show career has been shaky at best. He starred in a variety of schlock, like the teen sex comedy Hotbot. The actor has struggled to maintain the same levels of success as his former co-stars. In 2017, he faced further challenges when he was fired by Netflix from the ranch amid multiple sexual assault accusations. According to HuffPost, four women accused the star of raping them in the early 2000s, with one filing a police report in 2004 about the alleged incident. In a statement given to USA Today, Masterson stringently denied the outrageous allegations. In 2020, however, the actor was charged with three counts of rape, according to the New York Times, and faces a maximum sentence of 45 years to life in prison if convicted. Fez may have struggled to attract the ladies in that 70s show, but in real life, Wilmer Valderrama garnered himself a reputation as a ladies' man. The star had a thing for dating much younger partners in his heyday. This includes teen stars like Mandy Moore, Lindsay Lohan, and eventually Demi Lovato. Since his slightly controversial age gap dating days, Valderrama has settled down with model Amanda Pacheco. The couple became engaged in 2020, and a year later, they celebrated the birth of their first child. Professionally, Valderrama has continued to enjoy some great success on the small screen, with roles in shows like Grey's Anatomy and NCIS, which fans hope will never end. Of the entire cast, Deborah Jo Rupp may be one of the most respected actors from that 70s show. And unsurprisingly, the veteran star of stage and screen has continued to be as in-demand as ever. In recent years, Rupp has enjoyed a critically acclaimed stint as Della in various stage productions of The Cake, on top of performing memorable arcs in shows like WandaVision and This Is Us. No matter what Rupp did or who she played, Kitty Foreman found her way back to her. On top of reuniting with some of her former cast members for The Ranch, Variety reported in 2021 that Rupp will be reprising her iconic role alongside her on-screen hubby, Kurtwood Smith, for the Netflix reboot series That 90s Show. Truthfully, Rupp hasn't transformed all that much since her That 70s Show days. While Rupp remains single, and happily so, it's important to note that she's a self-proclaimed dog lover, according to her Twitter. There, she shares ludicrously adorable pictures of her pups on the regular. Maybe that's her anti-aging secret. Like his on-screen other half, veteran character actor Kurtwood Smith has likewise enjoyed a fruitful career since leaving That 70s Show. Though the star's extensive list of credits include live-action fare like Agent Carter and Amityville The Awakening, Smith has primarily become known as a voice actor extraordinaire. He has supplied his talents to animated work including Rick and Morty and the stop-motion detective mystery Ultra City Smiths. Despite the many characters he's continued to depict, Smith once confessed to AV Club that his That 70s Show character remains a career highlight for him. The actor shared with the website that his depiction of stern military veteran Red Foreman was inspired by his stepdad, who died just before the pilot was shot, saying, "...to have a character that meant as much to me as he did personally? Well, that was special." Outside of acting, Smith appears to be committed to advocating for social change and to spending time with his wife and former RoboCop co-star, Joan Perkle, whom he married in 1988. As the next-door neighbor of the Foreman family, Don Stark's uproarious depiction of the toupee-wearing Bob Pinciotti was one of the highlights of the show. Prior to joining the That 70s Show cast, the character had already built an extensive career for himself from the Golden Girls to the cult classic Switchblade Sisters. 
Since leaving that 70s show, the quirky star has continued to enjoy a busy career. He has enjoyed drifting in and out of several films and TV shows like The Good Wife and the Oscar-winning Green Book with small but memorable roles. As he suggested during an interview with FanFest, that's exactly how he likes it too. That 70s show, though fun to be in, restricted Stark's sense of freedom as a character actor. He likes when he can weave his way through different characters. He shared, After that 70s show, it took a while to kind of recover from being Bob because it was such a specific kind of character. I know it's silly. I guess I'm vain. The legendary Tommy Chong didn't need too much preparation or research to depict cosmic stoner Leo on That 70s Show. The beloved character had built a career as one half of stoner comedy duo Cheech and Chong throughout the 70s. Since leaving the show, the Up in Smoke star has continued to keep it 420 by being a passionate activist for cannabis reform. In 2012, Chong announced that he had been diagnosed with prostate cancer, and by all accounts, weed helped him to deal with it. However, he was diagnosed with colorectal cancer just a few years later. According to GQ, Chong was in remission and feeling great as of 2019. Mary Jane aside, the star's varied career has remained incredibly interesting. On top of flexing his acting skills in films like Color Out of Space and Zootopia, he's also become an offbeat reality show star, having competed in The Masked Singer and Dancing with the Stars, where he was voted off just short of the final. When Eric Foreman left for Africa, he left an empty space in the family basement one that newcomer Randy Pearson tried and failed to fill. With just one season to his name, that 70s show ended, and actor Josh Myers was free to pursue a whole host of TV shows and movies. The actor spent many years focusing on smaller roles across many projects, including Are You There, Chelsea? and The Mindy Project. In more recent years, Myers has found steadier work as a sleazy, mustachioed photographer in the 80s set coming-of-age comedy Red Oaks and in collaborations with his late-night host brother, Seth Myers. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicky videos about your favorite shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.